What's up guys, Ovadov here. In this video, we're going to be doing tasks for the Nibiru Incentivize Testnet Phase 1. As usual, before we begin, a couple of disclaimers. First, nothing here is financial advice, always do your own research. And second, all information in the video and description, including links provided as is, so follow at your own risk. And as usual, all links are going to be in description. If you haven't watched the initial video on Nibiru Incentivized Testnet, stop this video right now and go watch that, because we're not going to go through the same things again. In this video, we're going to briefly touch on what changed and then we're going to dive into tasks. So the phase one is still ongoing, you can participate, you can get your points, you can still register for the campaign on Gleam. So what are the tasks? for uh, the phase one. So this Gleam social tasks, that's community part. For developers, we're not gonna do this one because it's too technical for me personally. The Oracle parts, if we check the note, it says that delegating to an Oracle counts for completion of this action. So basically you can add it to the this part for the delegators. And then what is left is running the node basically to complete this task. First of all, what has changed from the time of the first video, uh, the native explorer, if you go to the app and then you click stake, you end up on the native explorer. It started working better. So you can do some things now in the interface. And we're gonna need the explorer for two things. Obviously the first one is to check the transactions and the second one is going to be valuable to you if you do not plan to run the node. You can actually do these tasks now via the interface. So there are five basic tasks there. First one is delegate. You go into staking, you click delegate, you select the Nibi token and then you send the transaction. Second is to delegate same way but to an oracle. As you can see some of the validators have this uh, Oracle, 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 Oracle. So you delegate to them too. And then the rest of the actions you can do from the dashboard. After you delegate it, you're gonna see your assets and your delegations here. You can also click more and this will open your address on the Explorer and you can see all sorts of information here as well. I mean, pick and choose how you wanna do it, but basically all the actions uh, are available here. The third action is to withdraw rewards. You basically just need to confirm it. The fourth action is to unbond. This is basically undelegating your tokens. But keep in mind that you're not gonna get those tokens back into your wallet right away. So after unbonding, uh, where are my tokens? Yeah, you can see that in my wallet, 21 Nibi is currently unbonding. What does it mean? that these tokens are currently like coming back from delegation and they're gonna be back uh, in my wallet in two to three weeks usually. So just keep that in mind that they're not gonna be immediately available back to you. And the last action is the re-delegation where you move your delegation from one validator to another validator. I briefly tested these operations through the interface and I think four out of five operations actually went fine and the fifth failed. I don't remember which one was that, but I'm sure what is not working now will be fixed soon. So you should be able to do all of these uh, via the interface. But obviously you can do all of that if you run the full node and you just do it via commands. And also if you wanna complete this one for the validator, you will have to run the full node. Okay, now let's talk about how to run a node. And full disclosure, I'm not tech savvy, so if I spew some nonsense here, just let me know in the comments. We'll fix that in the description at least. So first of all, if you don't have a dedicated IP address on your like home PC or Mac, you won't be able to run your node because I tried it and it's just, I can't sync it with the chain. So you have to either have a dedicated IP address or you need to rent like a VPS at least. Actually, the minimum hardware requirements are not harsh at all. Uh, all you need is a four core CPU, eight gigs of RAM and a hundred gigs uh, of the space. Recommended uh, eight core, 32 gigs and 200 gigs of space. And if you wanna follow the guide that I was following, uh, it has to be on Linux. For the purpose of the video, I just reset the VPS so I have 
completely fresh Ubuntu. And also regarding the guide, I checked like dozens of guides that I found on the Discord. And actually this one on Node Jumper works perfectly for me. So I recommend using this one. Obviously I'm not gonna show basic stuff on like how to connect to your VPS. There are again, tons of guides on that. And that's also gonna depend whether on Linux, Windows or Mac. For me, I'm on Windows, I'm gonna be using Putty. First, we're gonna do the automatic command for server setup. And it will ask you for a public key because then you're going to be logging with the SSH key. And then we input the name of our new admin user and open port for the firewall. Here we can just use default. And the server name, whatever you want. And then we got to wait for the installation. And we need to input some information uh, for this new admin user, but you can literally just type whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference. And press yes. And it says that the server setup is done and now we can log out and log in again using our admin user. And as you can see now we can log in with SSH key. Next step is installation of the Nibiru node. We go into install and automatic and we're going to use the automatic command from this guide. It's asking us to enter the moniker. It's basically like the name of the node. And we wait. So it took a few minutes to install dependencies. And what it's doing now, it's downloading the snapshot so you can sync your nodes faster. I think snapshot is currently around like seven gigs, so it should be down soon. Okay, so at this point node has been installed and now we're gonna do a couple more steps from this guide on syncing. Uh, full disclosure, I have no idea if these commands are actually included into the basic installation that we just did. Uh, previously, I ran them separately and that worked for me, so I'm gonna do that again. So first we need to stop service and then I'm gonna execute these three commands for peers, address book, and uh, smart contracts. After that, we can restart our node with this command. Restart Nibit. And as you can see in this window, by default, you don't see any logs. So in order to see the logs, you can execute this command, journal CTL, and boom, we got the logs in this window. So it started syncing. Uh, the last time I did it, it took me around 20 to 30 minutes to, to sync to the current uh, block. I think it largely depends on the state of the snapshot because they do in snapshot every several hours. And so the closer you are to the actual state of the blockchain compared to your snapshot, the faster it's gonna be the sync. For now, let's just wait. This time it took around 10 minutes and we can actually check the status by doing this command. And if it returns false, that means that you are synced if it returns true, you're not sync. Then we need to import a wallet that we're using for incentivized testnet. Again, you can just follow command on my Google Doc and then two guides, obviously. And so here, after this command, you need to enter your mnemonic and then it will give you the data for your wallet. And you can always also check your wallets by command nibit keys list. As you can see, it's the same. 
Keep in mind that in this particular setup, the name of your wallet is always wallet. That's going to be important when you're sending commands. First, if you need to use the faucet, uh, you can execute this command. It's the same faucet that on the web version of the website that we used in the first video. As you can see, tokens has been sent. And if I try to execute it again, it says error. You can only request tokens every six hours. And now we're going to do all tasks here and we're going to check that in, in the Explorer. If you haven't connected the Explorer again, you can do it from the app. If you click stake, and here you connect the wallet. Make sure it's Kepler and the network is Nibiru ITN1. And we click next. Account name can be anything really. This should be the correct network. And we click next and make sure that you see the address of your Kepler wallet. In this case, that's correct. We click save and there you go. We connected it and now we'll be able to see our transactions in this explorer. The first transaction that we're going to do is delegating here. You can change how much you want to delegate. For example, this uh, means this 1 million basically means one Nibi. And then you can see the address here. This is the address of the validator. Now, how to find the address of the validator? Again, you can do that on the Explorer. That if you go to staking, you see the list of validators. If you, for example, click on Nibiru zero, you have validator address. It starts with the Nibi developer. So you copy that and you paste that in command. And this way, you know who you delegate into if you need to delegate to a specific validator. In my case, I'm just going to use the template. Execute and here in terminal, you're going to see the transaction hash and you can use this hash in order to check the status of transactions. Again, if you go on Explorer, and you search for this transaction, you can actually see it's been successful and you can see all the data. Now, if we go back to the dashboard, also keep in mind that interface on Explorer has some delays sometimes. So it may take a couple minutes to upgrade. And also, if you don't see the transactions that you did, just refresh the page it should help. But in this particular case, as you can see, it's already here. We delegated one Nibi to Kin. For the second one, we're going to do the same, but for the Oracle node. Again, we can check the hash if we need. Just wait and update on Explorer. The transactions in general are very fast, so you don't have to wait several minutes, for example. As you can see, we delegated to node space who's oracle also the next type of transaction is going to be claiming the rewards and from the dashboard you can click this small button more and it will actually open your account on uh, explorer and you can check all the transactions here so you can see the first time transactions didn't show i refreshed the page and then it showed and here you can see the types of transactions. First two were delegates, then withdraw. And now we need two more types to complete this. The first one is going to be to unbond or unstake. Again, you put in how much you want to unstake and the address of the validator. And this has been executed. Now we can check. We unstake in from kin in this particular case. Now, as you can see, delegation disappeared and we have a new transaction with a type of undelegate. And the last one is red delegation. I don't want to touch this uh, Oracle. So I'll just delegate back to Kin, and then we're going to redelegate it from him to another validator. We got one new back to Kin, and now we're going to redelegate. So on this command, you have two addresses here. So you redelegate him from the first address to the second address. And also keep in mind that in all of these uh, comments, you can change the amount of transaction here. 
You can also change different parameters like the gas and stuff, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, now let's check it on Explorer. So it was delegated to Kin. Gonna refresh a couple times. And now as you can see, delegation went to Volusi. And we have this transaction with the type of begin redelegate. So we delegated to a normal node, we delegated to an Oracle, we withdrew rewards, we undelegated, and then we redelegated. So all five types of transactions are done. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create the validator. I actually accidentally put one extra line, but basically uh, you need to set up the moniker and description, and you can also edit details later, so don't worry too much about it. And then you also have the initial amount of Nibi staked. And you can use this command to see the state of your delegator. And the same way you delegate it to other people, you can actually delegate to yourself. Here you can see your validator address that you need to delegate to. Obviously your delegator will be part of the inactive set because on active set only 120 uh, validators with the top uh, need be staked. But as you can see, you don't have to be active. You can be active or inactive to be eligible for these 75 points. And again, for Oracle's task should be completed because we delegated to the Oracle and we're skipping this one for developers. That's it for today. In phase two video, we'll be deploying smart contract and also hopefully we'll have some proposals that we can vote on. If you found video helpful, please drop a like, consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.